Hey everybody, this is Steve Bradley, God's Wordsmith, and this is Matthew chapter 13 with some more of Jesus' parables. Uh, this is part one, and it involves the tares, the mustard seed, and the leaven uh, from Matthew 13, 24 to 43. Now, as I've indicated at the end of this message, I intended to do all of the material at once, but it got too big, so now you have a part one and part two. Plus, there are some more parables after this, and an event, a very important event, that presages Jesus' future. So this parable is called the wheat and the tares, and this is a parable that must be explained for the disciples to understand it. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. When the grain had appeared and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? How come it has tares? He said to them, an enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Well, do you want us to go, go gather them up? But the owner said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, who apparently are a special class here, first gather together the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. So the question is, what's a tear? Well, basically, it's fake wheat. The uh, Greek word is idzonia, and it looks like wheat in its beginning stages, but it's useless as a food crop. So if we're, if we're making the comparison between disciples and wheat, the tares are phony disciples. They look like disciples, but they aren't for real. Now, interestingly enough, Jesus actually interposes a couple of additional parables in here. They're very short. So the question is, why doesn't he explain the parable of the tares right away? Because it's obvious the disciples don't get it. And the reason is the crowds. Jesus has just told the disciples the parables are meant to reveal truth to them, but conceal it from the crowds. And the disciples apparently knew not to ask for that, for that specific reason. So another parable he put forth to them saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all the seeds, but when it is grown, it is greater than the herbs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. And then another parable he spoke to them, the kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till it was all leavened. So what are these about? Well, Strangely enough, the disciples apparently understood these. Uh, it's good they did, because commentators have offered multiple interpretations of these parables for just about 2,000 years. So here's what I think they mean. First, these parables are both alike. Second, there is an element of good in each parable, the mustard seed and the meal, Third, there is an element of evil, for the birds and the leaven, so that on earth we see God's domain, what Jesus called the kingdom of heaven on earth, before he returns, as having in it both good and bad people. So this is somewhat like the tares, that the leaven's going to permeate everything, the birds of the air are going to come and come into the trees and nest there. They don't belong, but they're going to be there. Both birds and level are evil, but as long as the end is not here and the judgment is future, these conditions will continue. In other words, 
there are always going to be fake disciples. There are always going to be, there's always going to be evil in the church that permeates it. And as we will see in a moment, this agrees with the parable of the tares just about exactly. The end must come, folks, before evil can be rooted out, and only the reapers, that is the angels, are competent to do it. So now he also interposes, Matthew does, a little prophecy about the parables. And he says, all these things Jesus spoke to the multitude in parables, the crowds, and without a parable, he did not speak to them, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables, I will utter things kept secret from the foundation of the world. And so if you're in the know, you can understand. One of the things that this reveals to us is that the Bible itself is a progressive revelation. Now listen carefully here, because this is really important. In other words, you and I have more information than Moses did. We have more than Joshua did. We have more than Isaiah did. What they saw as in the future and obscure, we look on as past and clear. It's clear to us that Jesus was going to come. It was hard for Isaiah to understand. The Old Testament believers didn't understand the church. I should say, furthermore, they didn't understand the church. They sort of understood the Holy Spirit, but the changes that came with Jesus' arrival, ministry, death, and resurrection were mostly not fully understood until the Apostle Paul began his ministry to the Gentiles and wrote his letters. There are lots of hints but no full revelation. This does not make the Gospels or any other part of the Bible of less use or less value. It's just things weren't fully explained yet. So let's explain the wheat and the tares. Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came to him, and they said, Explain to us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said to them, He who sows the good seed is the Son of Man, which is a name Jesus often called himself. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom, but the tares are the sons of the wicked one. Now be very careful and listen to this. The sons are the, the tares are the sons of the wicked one. There is evil in church. There is evil in the kingdom of God. There is evil where there are worshipers of Jesus. It exists. They are there. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Therefore, says Jesus, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and those who practice lawlessness, and they will cast them into the furnace of fire, and there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Now these sons of the wicked one, they know who they are in many cases, and they really often refuse to repent and turn to the Lord in any genuine way. But still, when the judgment comes, it's like, oh no, how can this poss possibly be happening to me? Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of, listen carefully, their father. This is coming up later in the second part. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. At the end then, when the kingdom is perfected, there will be no fake believers left. Well, when will this happen? In John chapter, or I'm sorry, the, Re the book of Revelation 20 through 22, and it gives us a much more detailed account of this time 
and I am only going to be using selected verses. First, there is a thousand year kingdom. That includes both good and bad. Then the devil is loosed, and all Satan's servants stand up and rebel against God and his people. And for this, you will have to see part two. So I'm splitting this teaching in two. They're both ready. I'm uploading them consecutively. And if you only listen to one, your understanding will be incomplete. <clears throat> so anyway, part two is coming.